intelligence. While it isn't one of the quantifiable class of jutsu, it is one of the surest fire ways to be stronger in the Naruto universe. See, because while intelligence doesn't help you make your great fireball technique hotter or larger, and it doesn't improve the accuracy of your kunai throws, it does allow you to put yourself in advantageous situations that allow for your great fireball technique, regardless of how hot or large it is, or the kunai that you throw, regardless of how accurate they may or may not be, to hit their mark. However, one of the biggest misconceptions in the entirety of the Naruto fandom is that intelligence is only quantifiable in terms of battlefield IQ. And this is kind of a fallacy that exists in all anime fandoms. See, because while yes, your ability to figure out what's going on in the battlefield and scheme a way out of it to gain success is absolutely a large part of intelligence, that part of intelligence that falls under the umbrella of battlefield IQ doesn't take into account just general intelligence. General intelligence like did you create something? How did you do in classes? And so on and so forth. And this is why quantifying intelligence is so incredibly difficult. Because in order to truly break down who is the most intelligent in a universe, you not only have to take into account the feat that they've had on the battlefield and how they use their intelligence to gain victory, but you also have to figure out how they've used their intelligence off the battlefield. And thus, unfortunately, when it comes down to it, scheming up who is the smartest person in a universe is kind of subjective because some people are going to weigh battlefield IQ above regular intelligence, while some are going to do the exact opposite. But today, I want to take some of the subjectivity out of this conversation. Today, I want us to take an objective look at Naruto as a universe and the gigantic cast of characters that exist within it and truly, once and for all, quantify who are the most intelligent people in this story. And in order to do this in the most objective and accurate way possible, we have to weigh battlefield IQ equally against just standard intelligence. And thus, this ranking may look a little different from other rankings you've seen talking about the smartest characters in Naruto. Because some of the characters we've been told are the smartest characters in the universe are just not that. They might have abilities that boost their battlefield IQ, but when it really comes down to it, Naruto's universe is built on the back of undersold, wildly intelligent characters. Characters whose intelligence far surpasses those who we've been told are the smartest people around. And thus today, once and for all, we're going to be answering the question, who is the smartest person in Naruto? Because today, we're talking the top 10 smartest people in Naruto, ranked and explained. But before we get to ranking or explaining anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you like the idea of me ranking and explaining things from your favorite anime and manga, then you're going to love my other channel, The Weeb Commander, where instead of talking about Naruto and Boruto, I talk all other anime and manga. Kind of hard to do the whole talking about manga thing right now, because MHA's on a two-week break, Chainsaw Man's on a two-week break, JJK's on a three-week break, but hey, at least there's still anime. Now, before we dive headlong into this list, there's gonna be a couple of people that are left off this list that might raise a couple of question marks for you, the viewer. And those people are gonna be people like Donzo, Madara, and Naruto. So let's quickly break down why these three characters who are widely regarded as some of the more intelligent characters in the series are not gonna be making this list. See, the reason that anybody would put Donzo on this list is because he was constantly scheming up ways to acquire all the power he possibly could. And thus Donzo was constantly pulling multiple strings at once. He was controlling the root, he was controlling Itachi and Shisui, he was controlling Hiruzen, he made the entire village hate Naruto. But here's the thing, while Danza was constantly scheming, almost every single one of those schemes outside of making the entire village hate Naruto, and I guess even technically that scheme, failed in the end. His plan to use Koto Matsukame on Mifune and have Mifune sway the vote to make him the head of the Shinobi Alliance and therefore solidify his position as the next Hokage, failed. His plan to turn Hanzo against the Akatsuki to squander the Akatsuki and make sure the Hidden Rain stayed weak forever didn't work. As well, it did technically lead to the disposal of Hanzo. It also technically led to the creation of the Akatsuki. On top of that, him pulling the strings behind the Uchihaku to make sure that it happened not only weakened Konoha, but also inevitably led to his death. So while sure, absolutely, Donzo had his fingers in a lot of pies, uh, he was destroying those pies. But Nick, what about Madara? Well, outside of the fact that Madara's motivations were not his own, while Madara was, for all intents and purposes, a genius on the battlefield, I'm going to be trying to separate the term genius, at least how it's used 
used in Naruto, and intelligence as we're talking about it in this video. So yes, when it came to combat, Madara was a genius. But that doesn't necessarily mean he was intelligent. It means he was talented, and that he had a feel for combat like no one else. It means he had a large chakra pool. It means he had an EMS. And for those of you who are going to say, oh, but he was able to awaken a Rinnegan by taking some of Hashirama's cells, and he was able to manipulate Obito into bringing him back to life. One, the only reason he ever awoke a Rinnegan is because Black Zetsu directed him to look at the stone tablet in the Uchiha hideout. And two, no, he didn't convince Obito to bring him back to life. In fact, Obito was actively planning on not bringing him back to life. The only reason that Madara was ever brought back to life was because of Kabuto's intelligence, not Madara's. But Nikki's referred to as a genius all the time. So is Neji. So is Boruto. But I don't think either of them should be considered on this list. Shinki, Gara's son, is a genius. But genius is more used in a colloquial sense in Naruto to replace the word born talented. I would say that LeBron James is a genius of basketball, but I wouldn't necessarily say that he's one of the most intelligent people on the face of the earth. He's smart. I'm not saying he's not smart. He's a billionaire after all. Not that all billionaires are smart. In fact, most of them are pretty stupid. But LeBron James isn't winning Nobel Prizes in physics. And it's for that exact reason that Naruto was also not on this list. So yes, Naruto was able to add elemental releases to a Rasengan and add shape transformation on top of that. Tie that into the fact that he was able to maintain thousands of shadow clones all at once, share his chakra with the entirety of the Shinobi Alliance, and yeah, pretty much everything indicates towards Naruto being a genius, at least in the way that Naruto, the show and universe uses that word. But that doesn't mean that Naruto is intelligent. And just to circle back to Madara, almost all of his plans, just like Donzo, also failed. Like the time he tried to motivate all the Uchiha to leave Konoha, and then they just said nah, and he had to leave on his own, getting Kurama to battle against Hashirama didn't work. Even the Eye of the Moon plan didn't work. So let's not conflate strength and genius as Naruto, the universe identifies with intelligence. Got it? Good. Now let's get into our list. Coming up at number 10, aka last place, we have Hiruzen, also known as the Professor. See, Hiruzen was an actual genius. He was considered the god of Shinobi before Hashirama stole that title from him. And the reason that Hiruzen was referred to as the god of Shinobi wasn't because he was the strongest Shinobi of all time, like Hashirama, but instead because of his mastery of almost all ninjutsu. See, Hiruzen is said to have mastered every single ninjutsu of the leaf, except for flying rocks. Raijin, which means that Hiruzen, without the usage of a Sharingan, was able to use thousands of ninjutsu through sheer intelligence and training. This is a level of mastery and dedication that we basically don't see from anybody else in the story outside of Orochimaru. And in fact, as Hiruzen was the teacher of the legendary Sanin, all of whom turned out to be incredibly powerful ninja, two of which on the back of their incredible intelligence might prove that Hiruzen's intelligence and his desire to master all ninjutsu led into his students. Tie this into the fact that whether you like it or not, Hiruzen has made a myriad of incredible battlefield decisions that have saved lives, like him using the Reaper Death Seal on Orochimaru, Hashirama, and Tobirama simultaneously to end the battle, even though it would cost him his life. And other moments, like when he used his Monkey King Enma staff to push Kurama out of Konoha so that Kurama wouldn't be able to impart any more damage on the village. Tie this into the fact that Hiruzen as Hokage won Konoha the first, second, and third grade great shinobi world wars, and while we don't necessarily see it or have first-hand evidence to prove that this is the way that it went down, it's pretty easy to come to the conclusion that Hiruzen is one of the greatest tacticians in Naruto history, because after all, as Hokage, his biggest role is to be in charge of Konoha's battle force, and thus missions like the Kanabi Bridge mission that crippled the Hidden Stone's efforts to push into Konoha's territory were his idea. Sending Sakamo Hatsuke on a counter-offensive against the Hidden Sand in the Second Great Shinobi World War was his idea. And when you consider the fact that over the course of the First Great Shinobi World War, both Hashirama and Tobirama died, Hiruzen stepping in and winning that war while staying alive is rather impressive, and a genuine testament to not only his battle IQ, but his ability as a tactician. So I believe that Hiruzen is very deservingly getting our number 10 spot. But Hiruzen is getting eked out by our number 9 entry, Itachi. Oh, Nick, I thought you weren't going to put any geniuses on this list. And, well, yeah, I'm not putting that much weight into the idea of Itachi being born 
talented. Pretty much everything Itachi ever showed us proved to us that he was, in fact, a genius, both on and off the battlefield. See, we're going to be weighing the creation of Jutsu, especially powerful Jutsu, pretty heavily on this list. And while I don't count Awaking to MS abilities like a Susano, Amaterasu, or Tsukiyomi as a creation, adjusting to those techniques and using them in an appropriate and efficient manner almost immediately will score you some points. And that is exactly what Itachi did. See, while I can sit here and say that the decisions that a 13-year-old Itachi made when being forced into the Uchiha massacre were not exactly intelligent, at the same time, if you take a step away from the situation and you realize that if Itachi didn't go through the Uchiha massacre, there was a possibility the Uchiha coup would happen, the Uchiha coup would have weakened Konoha more than the Uchiha massacre probably would have. And thus, there is an argument to be made that Itachi partaking in the Uchiha massacre was the intelligent play. Now, while I will always stand on the table and say that he could have just gone to Hiruzen, he was, after all, 13. And while I also disagree with the fact that Itachi still worked with Donzo even after Donzo killed his best friend, pretty much everything after the Uchiha Massacre is a masterclass from Itachi. See, Itachi goes through the Uchiha Massacre knowing full well that Sasuke will hate him. And thus Itachi realizes that in order to make Sasuke as powerful as possible, he has to weaponize that hate. And Itachi does all of this while actively planning to join the Akatsuki, the most dangerous criminal organization on Earth, so that he can hide amongst its ranks and give information about the Akatsuki back to Konoha, which he may or may not do. But if we're buying into the ideology that Itachi was actively feeding information to Konoha, then Itachi pulling back up after Hiruzen's death and telling Jiraiya straight up the Akatsuki's target is Naruto, then that was an incredibly intelligent move by Itachi, masked by the idea that Itachi was going to Konoha to show Danzo that he was still alive. Tie this into Itachi making a double-tiered plan of making Sasuke come back to Konoha by battling him until Sasuke was out of chakra and then using that opportunity to finish Shirochimaru once and for all, and by implanting the Kodo Matsukame Crow in Naruto and having the eyes of Kodo Matsukame programmed to his eyes because he knew that Sasuke would take his eyes after his death, and Itachi kind of falls into the same categorization as Madara, that is to say he was making long-term plans based off his genius level abilities. However, unlike Madara, all of Itachi's plans work. Sasuke becomes the strongest Uchiha of all time, Itachi is able to dispatch of Orochimaru, and while technically the Kodo Matsukame Crow reacts to Itachi's Edo Tensei dies, that plan still breaks Itachi out of Edo Tensei. Tie this into the fact that without Itachi knowing about Izanami and knowing how to use it in a battle against Kabuto, everybody who was brought back using Edo Tensei by Kabuto would have been around probably forever. So while yes, Itachi does get talked about as a genius, if anybody who's talked about a genius deserves that moniker, it's him. You know, except for our number eight entry, because our number eight entry is Minato, immediately regretting what I just said. But Nick, Minato was also talked about as a genius, and he was just born talented. You're right, but he also made a bunch of really good decisions. I mean, he made a lot of bad decisions as well, but we'll get to those later. See, Minato was the first person on this list that we can genuinely sit down and say he created a jutsu. And we now know because of the Minato one shot that the jutsu that Minato created was the Rasengan, a jutsu meant specifically to counteract the abilities of the tailed beast ball. And those are high stakes for creating a jutsu, especially when you're doing it while battling in the second great shinobi world war as a 14 year old, which is probably why it took Minato three whole years to create the Rasengan. And that the only other person to ever come close to creating the Rasengan was Asura, the child of a god, then pulling off that feat in just three years is rather impressive. Tie that into the fact that Minato has the highest ever score leaving the Shinobi Academy, which just speaks to his general intelligence, and you have the basis for one of the more intelligent characters in all of Naruto. And that's without even considering his battle IQ. See, I'm not going to talk about the fact that Minato was able to immediately figure out KCM2 or use perfect sage mode. That's talent, not intelligence. What I am going to talk about, however, is the fact that Minato, after battling against Obito just one time was able to identify that Obito was going to be a reoccurring threat in Konoha. And thus, with that in mind, Minato in his final moments decided to split Kurama's chakra between himself and his newborn child so that his newborn child would A, have the tools to battle against that threat, and B, possibly live up to the hype of the child of prophecy. And thus, in that moment, mind you, after being impaled and using a technique that should have killed him and did eventually kill him, Minato used Uzumaki Fu and Jutsu that he was taught in his spare time by Kushina to make a game time decision that Naruto needed half of Kurama and not the entirety of Kurama, and that Naruto needed the 8 trigram seal because the 8 trigram seal would allow for Naruto to slowly access Kurama's chakra and get used to it. On top of this, Minato, after interacting with the entirety of Kurama's chakra only once or twice, came to the realization that the combination of the 8 trigram
hologram seal in the entirety of Kurama Chakra would be too much for a baby and would lead to Naruto's death. Tie that into the fact that just a couple minutes prior to this, Minato was almost immediately able to deduce exactly the limitations of Kamui and dunk all over Obito in a matter of a couple of minutes, and you have a very easy case for Minato having some of the highest battle intelligence in all of the Naruto universe. Because the only other people to truly break down Kamui to the level that Minato broke down Kamui were Kakashi and Konan. And Konan had years to work out that thesis. But since we're talking about people who are able to figure out how Kamui worked and create a counteractive measure against it, next up on our list... We got Kakashi. See, separating Kakashi and Minato in terms of intelligence is kind of difficult. See, because while if we had as much time with Minato as we've had with Kakashi, you could probably pretty easily make the argument that Minato is more intelligent than Kakashi. The data set we have of Kakashi is just larger. See, because while Minato might have created the Rasengan, Kakashi created the Chidori. And while the creation of the Chidori was technically an accident, it was only an accident that came around after Kakashi mastered the Rasengan. And thus Kakashi, after mastering the Rasengan in a relatively small amount of time, decided let's add lightning release to this and accidentally collapse the Rasengan, creating the Chidori. And while you could say that accidentally creating a Jutsu is less impressive than very clearly purposely creating a Jutsu, this isn't the only Jutsu that Kakashi created, as Kakashi also created any derived Jutsus from his Chidori, like his tracking fang or his lightning distribution technique, which allowed for Kakashi to either make a closed line of lightning that could cut through anything or a giant electric wolf. I admit, these are just derived jutsus of the Chidori. Sasuke makes like seven of those. And you're right, derived jutsus of the Chidori aren't all that impressive in terms of an intelligence feat. But you know what? is impressive? Is seeing Madara use purple lightning in the fourth great shinobi world war then having that same Madara steal your Sharingan so you can no longer use your Raikiri? So a couple years later you decide, oh I'm just gonna recreate that purple lightning in the form of a Raikiri that doesn't require the usage of a Sharingan. And thus I'm gonna make an upgraded version of the Chidori that's more powerful even after I've lost my Sharingan. Tie that into the fact that Kakashi was known as the copy ninja when there was an entire clan of Sharingan users and improves the Kakashi's ability to deduce the hand signs and chakra movement of a person he was watching with his Sharingan was much higher than even a standard Uchiha. Itachi wasn't known as the copy ninja, it was Kakashi. Tie all that into the fact that Kakashi, just like Minato, was able to deduce how Kamui worked when him and Obito battled, and how Kakashi was able to create a circumstance against Kaguya that allowed for him to not only speed blitz her, but also set her up to be sealed by his students. And while sure you could say Kakashi figuring out how Kamui works isn't as impressive as Minato, because after all, he does have Kamui himself, his Kamui doesn't work the same way as Obito's, and he technically created more jutsus than Minato. So while I could absolutely understand if you wanted to switch Minato and Kakashi's positions, I think Kakashi ekes out over Minato in terms of intelligence. But enough about the boys, let's talk about the girls. Because coming up at number six, we have Tsunade. I feel like I don't have to make a hugely compelling case for Tsunade, she is literally a doctor, but if I did have to make a compelling case for Tsunade being one of the most intelligent people in the universe, I would point you at the fact that she was not only able to make sure that Rock Lee could could walk again, but also fight again, and she was able to guarantee that the efficiency and survival rate of the surgery that Rock Lee was going to undergo became better on account of how much research she did, but she was also able to, after studying Nara textbooks, figure out how to bring somebody back from the brink of death after they ate the tricolored pills so that she could save Choji. On top of this, she also believed that she would be able to give Orochimaru function of their arms back after Hiruzen sliced off Orochimaru's soul arms, and while we never necessarily get to see Tsunade do this, the fact that she believed she could is crazy. And while Tsunade didn't create the strength of a hundred seal, she did create the mitotic regeneration seal that allowed for her to automatically heal all wounds to her body so long as she had enough chakra to heal them. Oh, Nick, what do you mean? Isn't creation rebirth just a hollow copy of Hashirama's healing factor? Technically, yes, it is. But Hashirama's healing factor wasn't a jutsu. It's just something that he had because of how overabundant his chakra and life force was. Tsunade had to find a way to reverse engineer that healing factor and thus she created creation rebirth. Birth, which made her, so long as Creation Rebirth was active, effectively immortal. And while Tsunade didn't create the strength of the Hundred Seal, and there's a possibility that Mito had it as well, we don't know whether or not Mito had the strength of a Hundred Seal, and therefore there's a possibility that Tsunade had to find the strength of a Hundred Seal and teach it to herself, which speaks to a level of intelligence. And while her battlefield IQ is average at best, she's not an incredible tactician, her IQ when applied to the battlefield is a massive asset. That's confusing, let me break it down. See, while Tsunade isn't necessarily a tactician and doesn't have too much to talk about in terms of a battlefield IQ, in the Second Great Shinobi World War, without her, thousands of Konoha Shinobi would have died. Now, that's because Granit Chio was applying a myriad of different poisons to her puppet's weapons, and these poisoned weapons would cut Konoha Shinobi, and usually 
kill them, unless, of course, they were able to create the antidote. And thus, Tsunade, with her almost infinite knowledge of medical ninjutsu, was able to create antidotes for every single one of these individual poisons, which inevitably led to Konoha's victory in the Second Great Shinobi World War and the saving of thousands of lives. So while Tsunade's battlefield IQ is nothing to write home about, her IQ, when applied on the battlefield, is a massive game changer. But is it as big a game changer as our number five spot? Because in our number five spot, we have the exact opposite argument as Tsunade with Shikamaru. Nick, what are you talking about? Shikamaru, you fit, buddy. You both to die. You over 200. He's just genuinely not that impressive in terms of intelligence. Yeah, I'm aware the story tells us that Shikamaru is intelligent all the time. And I'm aware that whenever Shikamaru crafts a plan, it usually works out. But Shikamaru's first ever mission, the Sasuke Retrieval Arc, his plan was split up gang and while yes he technically optimized the group and he put kiba in the back for rear control and he put neji in the front to search with his byakugan at the end of the day his plan for the sasuke retrieval arc was oh we bumped into one of the sound village four somebody go fight him which was like objectively the right play except for when you consider the fact that choji should have died neji should have died kiba should have died and he should have died because choji took the tricolored pills neji got shot twice and both kiba and shikamaru needed saving from the sand siblings tie all this into the fact that sasuke was not in fact retrieved and he got a pretty bad start to this whole thing but nick what about his plan against sidon his plan of digging a hole yeah i understand that his plan allowed for hidan and kakuzu to be split up but that's that's not that impressive tie that into the fact that he had prep time for that and pretty much has prep time for every plan he ever creates and the plans he pulls off are not that impressive i mean the man needs to sit down and put his hands together to make a plan do you know how much of a detriment that is on the battlefield oh but nick he's still a master tactician and he's really good as a politician i mean yeah he's okay he's a politician he's the head of the shinobi alliance in his second light novel he avoids the fifth great shinobi world war by bringing everybody together and making naruto give a speech but like if you've read that light novel you'll realize that shikamaru is really just leveraging naruto's golden retriever energy and and I get that he was the backbone of the planning of the Shinobi Alliance after his father Shikaku died. And that's why I'm putting him this high on the list. See, to me, intelligence is shown, not told. And while Shikamaru definitely does have an incredibly high battle IQ, Naruto in the beginning of Shippuden straight up says Kakashi's smarter than him. And I tend to agree because Kakashi doesn't need to put his hands together. He can just think. But the Nick, why is Kakashi lower than Shikamaru? Well, because of recent revelations in the Boruto manga. See, while I'm purposely keeping Boruto characters off this list, because if Boruto characters were to be on this list, Amado and Code and all of them would need to be on this list. Maybe not Code, but Amado. Recently, Boruto was made clear to us that Shikamaru still got that high intelligence stat, because Shikamaru is only one of two people who's been able to break out of omnipotence by intelligence alone. However, this is objectively less impressive for Shikamaru than it is Amado, because the only reason that Shikamaru breaks out of omnipotence in the first place is because he bugs Amado's lab and Amado's like, oh yeah, I think my memories have been altered. Tie that into the fact that Sarada's been screaming at him for three years that his memories have been altered. And yeah, it's just not like that impressive, but it is impressive enough that he was able to break himself out of it. And yes, by the way, I am aware that he can make a plan without sitting down and putting his hands together. He does it in the battle against Asuma in the fourth great Shinobi World War. But if we're going to sit down and genuinely say that prep time feats make you one of the most intelligent person in the entire universe, then Conan also deserves to be on this list. And now that I'm looking at this list, Conan probably also deserved to be on this list. But Conan, while she was the leader of the Hidden Reign and did probably create her paper body jutsu, of which name I'm currently forgetting, and she did create a plan that would have effectively killed Obito without Izanagi, I just don't think that's enough in terms of feats, considering how much time she had to figure out Obito's abilities to edge out anybody else on this list. But honorable mention. But yeah, Chikamaru's coming in at number five. I don't care that we've been told he has a 200 IQ. I don't care that he's good at Shogi. If you've read the light novels, he's just, he's not that impressive. But you know who is impressive? The person coming in at our number four spot, Kabuto. Oh, Nick, Kabuto's stolen everything he's ever gotten. How could he be the fourth most intelligent person in the universe? That's just objectively not true. See, Kabuto, even long before he became a dragon boy, or even Orochimaru's crony, was one of the most talented and intelligent people in Naruto. I mean, Kabuto's understanding of medical ninjutsu by the time of the Konoha crush arc was so incredibly advanced that by the time he fought Tsunade, he might have been better than her. And while, yes, technically, this fight is marred by the fact that Tsunade had hemophobia, Kabuto's 
usage of Chakra Scalpel basically cut Tsunade down. Mind you, this was all after Tsunade hit him with what should have been her signature jutsu, Body Pathway Derangement. A jutsu that allowed for Tsunade to transmute the chakra in her body to have electrical current so that she could fry the electrical currents of other people's bodies, which allowed her to mess with people's nerve pathways so that if you tried to move your finger, your head would twitch or something like that. And in a mere matter of seconds, Kabuto remaps his entire body's controls and proceeds to beat down one of the legendary Sani. Now, while that might fall under the category of genius, aka talented, what moments such as that I have to give points to intelligence. On top of this, this whole while, Kabuto was acting as a double agent spy against the Akatsuki for Orochimaru, and thus was manipulating one of the most dangerous and powerful criminal entities in the entire universe. But on top of that, Kabuto was also able to assimilate part of Orochimaru's flesh onto his own body and become a great white snake like Orochimaru. But Kabuto didn't stop there, as he was also able to assimilate the abilities of every single person that had ever touched Orochimaru in his lives. And thus, Kabuto was able to use the abilities of all of Hebi, all of the Sound Village 5, and he became a snake sage, all on his own. And mind you, he was doing all of this while perfecting Edo Tensai, something that Toby Rama and Orochimaru could not do, and was managing to give Madara a perfect, youthful, and more powerful body, something that nobody who's ever used Edo Tensai has been able to figure out. In terms of sheer intelligence, he's almost untouched. And if you genuinely wanted to give him the number two or possibly the number three spot, I could not blame you. But in my number three spot, I have my personal goat, Toby Rama. But Nick, didn't you literally just say that Kabuto was able to figure out Edo Tensai better than Toby Rama was ever able to use it? Yeah. I did, but just because Boeing has figured out how to kill whistleblowers better than the Italian Mafia ever did, doesn't mean that the Italian Mafia wasn't more intelligent for figuring out in the first place. See, because while I can sit here and say that the creation of amoxicillin is a scientific marvel, none of that happens without the creation of penicillin, and that's a really bad example because the creation of penicillin was a mistake. But you get it, the intelligence to create is more impressive, to me at least, than the intelligence to improve. And thus, while in the category of Edo Tensai, Kabuto definitely has Toby Rama beat, it's also probably because Kabuto had much looser morals than Toby Rama. On top of this, Edo Tensai isn't all that Toby Rama created, as he also created the Shadow Clone technique and Flying Raijin. And let's just put all of that into perspective real quick. Toby Rama figured out how to make a sentient clone that could fight by his side. He also figured out how to jump into a dimensional rift that allowed him to travel anywhere on Earth that he'd marked instantaneously. And last but not least, he also figured out how to create a summoning contract with souls in the Pure Lands. That's not a fireball. That's not a water wall. That's not even a Rasengan. Those are three genuine acts against God, all created by the same guy. And not only did he create this jutsu, but he also so immediately figured out how to use them. As almost immediately after creating the Flying Raijin, he was able to use it in combat against Izuna Uchiha and cut him down. Now that's not easy to do, especially when you consider the fact that Izuna Uchiha was an MS wielder. On top of this, as a tactician, Toby Rama was a genius. Even ignoring the fact that without him, the Ambu, the Chunin Exams, and the Shinobi Academy wouldn't have been created. Without him, Madara would have been elected the first Hokage of Konoha. Without him, Hashirama and the rest of Konoha wouldn't have got money for the tailed beasts. And without him, the Uchiha, who were best suited for the job of policemen, never would have been given said role. See, while we don't have much to speak on Tobirama in terms of battlefield IQ, in terms of a politician and a leader, he is the most intelligent character we've ever seen in Naruto. So when you combine that with the fact that he was probably the greatest creator of Jutsu's ever, yeah, I believe he belongs in the top three. But does he deserve to be higher than the master manipulator? I don't think so, because coming in at number two, we have Black Zetsu. Listen, if you think Madara should be on this list, then Black Zetsu should be very high on this list. Because Black Zetsu is so incredibly intelligent that without him, Naruto doesn't happen. See, while Black Zetsu has technically had thousands of years to plan out Kaguya's return, facilitating Kaguya's return still required Black Zetsu to find a new Chiha and Senju duo that would have a chance of intermingling their DNA. And once Black Zetsu realized that a duo had created a village together, Black Zetsu began to whisper sweet nothings into Madara's ear, telling Madara that the Senju would slowly but surely suppress the Uchiha, and somewhat forcing Madara to rebel against Hashirama and Konoha as a whole, which then led to Madara losing in a battle against Hashirama, programming his eye with Izanagi to bring him back to life, and awakening the Rinnegan a couple dozen years later, which allowed for the first time in thousands of years for the Ghetto Statue to be summoned back down to Earth. But even this wasn't enough for Black Zetsu, as Black Zetsu also needed that Ghetto Mazo full of the tailed beast. 
Greece. And thus, Black Zatsu created the Eye of the Moon plan, an idea that he believed Madara would buy into, and an idea that Madara did buy into. And thus, an idea that Madara sold to Obito, that Obito sold to Nagato, that Nagato sold to the rest of the Yakatsuki. And thus, Black Zatsu was able to con some of the strongest people in the entire universe into buying into a plan that it completely fabricated. Also, its creator could come back to Earth. And while technically this plan doesn't work out because Kaguya loses, that's not Black Zatsu's fault. Black Zatsu keeps Obito alive long enough to use Rennie Rebirth on Madara, steals the Rennie of Obito and gives it to Madara, and thus facilitates the awakening of Three-Eyed Madara and the return of Kaguya. So yeah, if you want to say any character is intelligent from Naruto, you need to remember that they're operating in Black Zatsu's universe. And if they didn't see through Black Zatsu's plan, that means that they weren't as intelligent as Black Zetsu, which is a really bad way to introduce our number one spot because coming in at number one, we got Orochimaru, who, who didn't see through Black Zetsu's plan. But in Orochimaru's defense, they were busy doing other things. In fact, if anybody kind of saw through the Akatsuki, it was Orochimaru who joined the Akatsuki just to get a shot at Itachi, not for the Eye of the Moon plan. So you know what? I feel good about my number one spot. And even without the consideration that Orochimaru didn't see through Black Setsu's plan, Orochimaru should be considered as our number one spot on this list. Because while the number one thing said about Orochimaru is that they never die, they're like a cockroach, the reason that Orochimaru never dies is because of their overwhelming intelligence. See, Orochimaru, in part one of Naruto, had already figured out a way to be effectively immortal, and all it required was switching bodies every three years, and possibly if Orochimaru was able to secure a perfect vessel, even less than that. But when he realized the fact that Orochimaru figured out immortality as a side project, because they realized that they wouldn't be able to crack the code of all the world's jutsus in one lifetime, it makes the whole figured out immortality thing all the more impressive. Tie this into the fact that for the majority of Naruto's timeline, Orochimaru was not only running from Konoha, but also the Akatsuki, while still doing research on all things ninjutsu, Genjutsu, Taijutsu, Senjutsu, and that Orochimaru prior to Kabuto perfecting Edo Tensai, perfected Edo Tensai, and while Orochimaru never used it on the scale that Kabuto used it on, Orochimaru was able to bring back the four dead Hokage, who played a massive role in the fourth great Shinobi World War. But even if you want to ignore how incredible Orochimaru is as a scientist, and Orochimaru is inarguably outside of maybe Amado, the greatest scientist in Naruto and Boruto history, I mean they cracked the code on cloning around the same time as Amado, which is why Mitsuki, a perfect Snake Sage exists, Orochimaru is also a genius as a planner and a tactician. See, Orochimaru has dozens of labs scattered across the entire globe so that if they're ever found, they can escape to a different lab, which is a great idea and it usually works out for Orochimaru. But that's not even the most impressive thing tactically that Orochimaru's ever done. Orochimaru pitted the hidden sand against Konoha, killed the Kazekage, took the Kazekage's position, and then almost destroyed Konoha. And you can say, oh, but they weren't successful all you want. The the plan that Orochimaru had was perfect. Infiltrate the tuning exams with the Sand siblings, which gave the Hidden Sand an excuse to have a presence in Konoha, masquerade as the Kazekage so you can direct the Hidden Sand to do whatever you want them to do, and then launch an attack from the center of Konoha. Really, the only reason this plan didn't work is because Orochimaru didn't know about the Reaper Death Seal and because Naruto was stronger than Gara. That doesn't mean it wasn't a well-laid plan. So for the sheer fact that Orochimaru is probably the greatest scientist of all time, might currently be working with Boruto and Kash and Koji, which could imply they've broken out of omnipotence, is on the path of figuring out every single jutsu the world has to offer, has already gained effective immortality by taking over a white Zetsu body, and is also a master tactician and battlefield planner. And yeah, I believe it's fairly obvious if you look at the evidence and not what we're told, that Orochimaru is the most intelligent person in all of Naruto, not including Amado. Amado does give Orochimaru a run for their money. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Who do you believe is the real, most intelligent person in all of Naruto? Is it Orochimaru or is it somebody else? Tell me in the comments below and while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And yeah, I know, Orochimaru used their biggest form against Itachi and his Totsuka blade and slid it out of one of the snake's mouths, which made them a really easy target for the stabbing, but Orochimaru didn't know the Totsuka blade was an ethereal weapon.